Hi, today is October 17th, 2024, and here are my poems for the day. The first one is poem number 1614 for the year, A Couple of White Gulls Sitting Around Talking. Two gulls were sitting on the water, knitting, or maybe they were resting after a long day of knitting, or maybe gulls don't knit. My husband is sleeping with his secretary, said one of the gulls. The other gull replied, yeah, that will happen, even with gulls who don't normally get married and who don't normally have secretaries. The first gull said, what am I going to do? You're probably going to sleep with the paper boy, said the other gull, even though gulls don't normally subscribe to newspapers. You're probably right, said the first gull, and yet it all seems so meaningless. The second gull replied, gulls don't normally find meaning in the quotidian or in sexual gratification or in feelings of tit for tat or in revenge. In fact, gulls don't normally find meaning. Gulls normally live a meaningless existence but don't normally get bent out of shape about it. Perhaps you should try Pilates. Have you tried Pilates? A few weeks later, the first skull discovered that Pilates gave her life meaning, and this was a good thing because she had decided that the paper boy was probably too young for her. Poem number 1615, The Egg Beater. The egg beater has not, had not been touched in the five years since the entire household had gone vegan. How the egg beater missed the days of scrambling the albumen and yolk into a uniform consistency and color. It wasn't much of a raison d'etre, but it was the egg beater's raison d'etre, and now that the family was vegan, the egg beater had no raison d'etre. Perhaps someday someone will find another use for the oddly shaped utensil with, rotary blade, with its rotary blades. It probably wouldn't make a good sex toy, and you can't use it to hail a cab or core a apple. That was a honeymooner's reference, okay? Leave me alone. But maybe somebody will think of something someday. Until then, the egg beater will be there, biding its time, not beating eggs. Poem number 1616, interesting election issue. When I saw that Jimmy Carter had cast his vote for Kamala Harris via mail-in ballot, I morbidly wondered whether his vote would count if he happens to die between now and the election. It turns out that because he lives in Georgia, it will count, but several states have laws that state that if a voter dies before election day, the vote doesn't count. This is an interesting issue to me. I wonder whether it is actually right to count the vote of someone who dies before election day. I'm not sure it is, but it's not that interesting an issue to me, and I probably won't think about it much more. Although, if Jimmy Carter dies before election day and Kamala Harris wins Georgia by one vote, I certainly will think about it, and I probably won't be the only one. Poem number 1617, The Chill. The chill went down her spine and out the door and caught a bus, an ominous bus. The chill got off near City Hall and climbed the wall and crept up the spine of one of the legislators, and the bill was withdrawn, and the chill moved on. The chill climbed back over the wall and went to the mall and crept up the spine of an indecisive shopper who ended up deciding against. Then the chill headed down the coast, where it was eventually dissipated by the Miami heat. Because the chill could do many things, but it couldn't play basketball to save its life, and so it died. And last poem of the day, poem number 1618, it's a haiku, The Ending. Out with a loud bang. Then, with a quiet whimper, then another bang. All right, that's it. Thank you. I appreciate you.